Hey guys, how's it going? It's so nice to meet you. I am loving these backgrounds. And Nick, why you got to be different, bro? Well, uh, I think this is just you know, the, the, how I'm feeling today. I'm I like feeling it. Very much like my cadet behind me, my my co-pilot. So mm -hmm. we're sailing the seas today. Perfect. You're like just gonna keep me level. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk 430 movie. This I really enjoyed this, and you guys looked like you had a ton of fun while filming. And I love that, and that this is, I believe, Kevin Smith's first coming of age. So, if like, which I'm like, that's crazy because I know he's like obsessed with Degrassi, and now he's like wanting to do a coming of age movie. So, like, kind of, how does that feel, Austin, to lead kind of a pioneering movie for such an iconic writer director? I mean, it, it's the craziest thing that I mean I've ever experienced in terms of career, and just it's honestly like a dream come true, and. Yeah, I just feel super, super grateful. I love that. And this isn't your first time working with him. Um, you've worked with him on like Clerks 3 and some of the things. Um, what is it that you've learned from him that you are going to take with you in your career? I think definitely trusting your vision and really it's mainly about you convincing yourself like in having just such a strong belief in what you're making uh, to, to make things happen and get the ball rolling with projects. But I think in terms of filmmaking, just him as an editor and just getting to watch how somebody that's a director, but also edits works is just has been such a cool uh, and amazing, unique experience where he just thinks about the process so differently in terms of angles and what needs to be captured and honestly some days we even got off early because he just got what he needed that's awesome and you guys were filming in new jersey like at his childhood theater so when you were getting off early on those days like what were you guys doing were you hanging out were you like running home to the hotels were you just causing mayhem talk to me <laughs> Literally, I think everything that you just said all in one, running home to the hotel, causing mayhem there, uh, causing mayhem, I guess, on the streets of Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey as well, uh, walking around in full 80s garb, going to the, like, yeah, the local <laughs> restaurants uh, with my rat tail, uh, making some friends along the way. Oh, yeah, we had a lot of laughs pretty much every single day on set and afterwards as well. I love it. Um, are there any shenanigans, stories, Sienna, that you can share? I remember, I remember... 4 a.m. They the I believe it was Reed might have been in New York at the time, but Nick and Austin wanted to take a little Wawa trip to the gas station and get a get something to eat. And I oh. I don't drive in you know freeways in Jersey like wow. So we went to we went to Wawa and then after we grabbed something from the gas station we went to like a boat harbor or a pier. It's a marina. Yeah, and then we laid down and just looked at the stars. Um, that was just, it felt like an indie movie in itself, but mm -hmm. <laughs> or I, I'll watch it. I love that. And Nick, I'll start with you on this one. I love that Brian has to be really brave. I think it's scary to call the person you like, ask them out on a date, and like make you know dreams come true. So is there a moment that you would say, either in your life or your career, that you've had to be really brave? Oh man, I don't have to. I'm being brave sitting here having to pre pretend I know how to answer questions. I feel like um, I don't know. I, I'm more of a cowardly type of meekish person myself, so I, I can't say I've ever done anything very brave. I'm just a little actor, you know. Uh, <laughs> like I'm just a little actor. I think taking on big roles yeah. and having to be silly, like being ridiculous in front of strangers that eventually become family. Like I think that's being brave. Uh, yeah, for sure. In a way, absolutely. There is a vulnerability, but um, at least on this set, working with these three uh, incredible individuals, it was um, it was kind of just like jumping in a big old pool, you know, just having fun. Doing a backflip. Um, yeah. What about the rest of you? Reed, I'll start with you. Or Austin, sorry, we're going in alphabetical order. Austin, is there a moment that you remember in your career that you have to be brave? And it could be something as like just jumping in a lake. You know, like thinking about the creatures. I don't know. <laughs> I think about shark movies. I couldn't get in water with animatronics. Those people are crazy. <laughs> I, yeah, well, with that, I mean, 
when I was do, filming scary stories, we filmed uh, at an actual, like a haunted, uh, an abandoned mental uh, asylum that was, we were there all night long for a whole week. Uh, and I would kind of just have to be alone in this room. And, and I went and explored the parts of it just because I thought it would be fun and help me get more scared because my character was supposed to be scared, but it, it was it was terrifying. It's crazy. Yeah. Reed, what about you? I would say that the bravest things I've had to do have been in my theatrical background. Uh, every play I'm casting, people love to kill me. People just love to watch me die. I don't know if it's because I have, people told me it's because I have like kind eyes, so everyone's sad when I die, which is very sweet, but but in a recent play I did, I had to jump off of a like 14 foot wall and die that way every single night, many days of the week. Uh, so it was brave for my body and for my spirit as well. <laughs> yes. was <laughs> oh man. Um, well, I, I don't have cool stories, but I did a I did like a zombie horror show um, called Resident Evil. And I think for that one, there's quite a lot of stunts as well. Um, and there was one time where the stunt team was sick uh, with COVID and we had to do the whole fight scene by ourselves that week. And they were like training us on Zoom on the day. <laughs> um, so that was pretty insane. But that's awesome. Yeah. See, great. Awesome. Crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I in this movie you guys are sneaking into an r-rated movie I did that eventually after I got in enough trouble my mom just started buying my tickets walking in and leaving so <laughs> you know that's also a movie for three dollars um are were you movie hoppers were you jumping into movies most definitely absolutely, absolutely for sure what yeah. is yeah. like the movie that you had to go see that you were like we're getting in no matter what for me for getting Sarah Marshall I actually, uh, funny enough, I it was either the first or the second Hangover that, uh, so full circle around with Mr. Ken. Uh, but that was a movie where I, I can remember us all being like, all right, we got to go buy the tickets for whatever was playing, like a cartoon or something. And then we all just kind of snuck in on to the other one. Was yeah, Ken I... Hangover? <laughs> oh, uh, did you, do you know Ken? Awesome. <laughs> do you know Ken? I'll introduce you. <laughs> uh, I'll go through Reed and Sienna as well. Uh, unfortunately, I most of my life have been riddled with Catholic guilt, so I, I have never, I have never movie hopped out of sheer fear of disappointment pointing people in my life so no I, I never movie hopped but I do remember seeing movies like Step Brothers and Blades of Glory and I don't know if those were R or PG-13 but I remember seeing them and just like having the time of my life I love it I also never theater hopped I think this that concept it was introduced to me through this <laughs> through this movie actually I don't know I think I was really into action with movies with my dad when I was younger I think Hobbs and Shaw even though it was quite recent um, the latest one that had, uh, was in Hawaii. I loved that one. I love it. See, I like, we've got our rebels and we've got our good kids in this. Sienna, <laughs> you, you did theater hop though. When we went to see American Graffiti, we, those, we, we watched... never actually bought tickets. So... <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> no. Don't out her. Don't out her. The movie, the movie theater is going to call her. <laughs> Don't out her. <laughs> Her soul just left her body when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> like, girl. Um, I've only got a couple minutes left. So, Nick, I want to say, I think your background might be a nod to Outer Banks. And I'm just wondering oh. if uh, we're going to see you in season four at all. I, you'll see me just like this. This is a, this is all I, this is the hint. This, this is, is the, the hint, hint right here. This is the exclusive. You'll, so be looking out for this type of stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, well, then my last thing for you, and guys, feel free to tag team this all at once if you want. Um, I just want you guys to give everyone your pitch. Like, why should everyone run to the theaters and go see the 430 movie? Everyone go before me because mine's going to be the best. I've been working on this. Yeah, no, totally. I'll go first then because I want to be the furthest away from Nick. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I would say that we are in desperate need of laughter right now. At least I feel that way. Sorry for speaking for everyone. I feel like I can. We all need laughter. And this movie, I think, is top to bottom joy. Uh, so if you want just a little dose of it in your life, now would be a good time on September 13th to see the 430 movie.
Phew, nowhere near as oh. good as Nick is going to be, but please, someone else, someone else go, please, God. I think it's just a movie full of heart and it was made with heart. It's about love and friendship and relationships and all that good stuff. But um, I think Kevin literally put his whole heart and soul into this. And uh, I think it really does show up on screen. So I think it's a special, special thing to see. Yeah, I think whether you're a fan of Kevin or not, I mean, if, I think if you are, if you are a fan of Kevin, it's some of his, I think his most truthful work that reminds me of some of his, uh, how he started out uh, his first movies. And I think I also agree with what Reed said. Like, I think we're just it's a big divisive time coming up. And I think it's just a really, really nice nostalgic escape. That's just really about human in security and vulnerability and change and just handling kind of the the basics of life can we live in such a chaotic world so yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah guys really drum roll drum roll right listen i'm gonna give it to you short and simple right here you got one weekend you got a couple movies to see we know what we're going up against but let's focus on the good things here first all right you want to laugh you got it here you want to maybe maybe you tear up maybe you cry okay right there that's number two number three is absolutely a communal event okay we know we got kevin smith fans coming in but just like just like austin says if you're not a kevin smith fan don't shy away because this is a movie for everyone if you want them funny comedic younger people movies this is it and hey why not why why why, why not make friends with 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 beetlejuice beetlejuice well i can't think of a better listen i can't think of a better pairing this weekend then to go, go get your head in the mind. Go get your head right. Go see 430. Go live in the 80s. And then go see Beetlejuice 2. Go see two movies this weekend. Go yeah. see two movies this weekend. And make sure 430 is one of them. Mm -hmm. I love beautiful, it. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Look at that. Well, thank you so much. I hope everyone does go see the 430 movie. Do a double feature. Sneak into Do one a double of them. feature. <laughs> only pay for only pay for, pay for the 430. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> be and, okay. and then sneak into Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's that's what we're promoting the rest <laughs> of this day. Thank you for helping us find that. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> well, have an awesome day. I hope your brains don't melt too much. And congratulations. <laughs> this movie is great. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much.